Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. Let's continue exploring new Chinese expressions. And in, well, today is the first day of March. In February, we talked about some romanticizing ideas, uh, mostly about appreciating women's beauty. And in this month, we're talk, uh, going to talk about a very distant subject to that. It's not about humans anymore. It's about man-made things. It's about technology. So Chinese as ancient language it has many characters from uh, extracted from the old way of living and old, I guess, ancient way of living. Sometimes, sometimes talk about living in the cave, right? It talks about ventilation in a cave. Um, Sometimes talking about raising pigs as your main protein intake and build that, build your home on top of the, the pig farm um, as a definition of home. Um, so it, this ancient way of living extracted into the language, how can it adapt or adopt new technology, new ways of living, new ways of humans interacting with the world? Um, it has its ways. So as I um, talked about in the Chinese Crash Course 3, that Chinese is, Chinese is a very, um, it's almost like auto-regenerative. It can keep re re rejuvenating itself by making it the language um, uh, relevant and useful and applicable to today's living. So in March, I'm going to show you some Expressions that uh, kind of translate, um, must be translation of the technologies happened in the recent, if not the decade, the recent century, uh, or from 20th century, close enough, post-industrial revolution, um, new technology terms, how those were translated into Chinese. Okay, so today is the first one, which is, um, uh, nothing but computer itself. So computer was translated in many, I mean, it was invented in America, but it was translated globally into, I mean, every comp uh, country that's been using that, every culture has to somewhat translate it, right? And many of them use uh, pronunciation or to capture computer, the English version, because that's the origin and that's the origin country's language, how to how to um, uh, term that, right? But um, many countries just use the closest the sound to represent that and kind of in capture, encapsulate um, the meaning. Like somebody has to ask like wh what that is uh, because it, it sounds something new, it's not um, from their language, but okay, qi suan qi. In Chinese, well, my first contact in a word computer, I guess was in my uh, middle school. Um, and then qi suan qi, when it was, uh, when it was introduced to the students, uh, just by the name Ji Suan Ji, we know it's something related to computing already because Ji Suan, the first two characters, Ji and Suan, was already part of the language. And we just add Ji, uh, which means man made machine. Um, so that itself already gives you the main purpose, the main function or application of this machine. This machine is used to compute. But of course, I mean, <laughs> we all uh, use calculator. So calculator is the most minimalist uh, application of computer, right? And this is more elaborate version of it, right? Bigger, stronger, better. Um, so ji suan ji then is Chinese language uh, response or adopt or use our existing characters that we already know um, and then recombine them, regrouping them to get computing or calculating plus machine, calculating machine combined together. And then that makes a uh, new sense to us. Okay. G and the sweat are actually two different things. Um, and I guess if you 
in today's world, everybody has to take computer 101, right? So computer 101, um, a lot of them talks about how information was stored, um, use is it a binary, um, uh, the, 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 you know, one and zero, one and zero signaling and signal storage, uh, and all that, um, that, um, information stored on computer, right? That's a big part of it. And then you can retrieve the information, uh, run some programs on it. So this C is this information storage. It's a recording information into the computer. And then the next step is to calculate or in today's fancy lingo as algorithm, like you build a certain algorithms to compute according to your plan. So Chinese already have that. The two main steps of what computer do is record information and of course retrieve it. All that is implied, but the first step is record and then calculate. This record information in Chinese is made of two parts. The left part here means speaking. We have seen this symbol many, many times uh, in one word a day because speaking is a major function of a hum human activity. And it was made into many of our characters uh, because a lot of them is about communication. And speaking plus <laughs> this cross sign, Chinese as a culture didn't get um, encounter Christianity until like 15th or 16th century. Some missionary traveled far across Euro-Asia continent to the other side of the earth. Um, and till then, like Chinese have no idea about uh, the, the, the good news, the gospel and all that. So this cross sign has nothing to do with crucifixion. And it simply is that ancient way of rope recording number 10. And this roping uh, technology, I imagine, okay, I've never seen it, is like you borrow your, uh, your or you lend money to your neighbor, right? And we can, we have 10 fingers. So decimal system is, you know, the most natural intuitive. You count all the way to 10. And once you count 10, um, you have to use your fingers to count again, right? It becomes complicated. So to preserve that number 10, like you already have 10 fingers counted. That's one group. Then people tie a knot on it. So this vertical line is the rope itself. And then this horizontal line intersect with the rope. So a lot of times, uh, I mean, originally it should be tied not like tiny little dot like that, but that's hard to see. It's hard to visualize. And the Chinese language as it is 2D frame thing, uh, have to be able to express things like in an obvious way. And also uh, the, um, this ambiguous things. So there's no, um, confusion or uh, in in years of duplication of message because you know for information to pass uh, across lands across generations through time and space right um, before we have all that information like a digitized technology people have to hand copy things so to reduce mistakes of hand copying things have to make as obvious as possible so this horizontal line was added to imply like there was a knot on it and that's number 10. And number 10 is this numerical recording, the base uh, unit re ever recorded on the rope. So that then means recording, the act of recording. And the speaking is simply kind of as a way of communication because when you communicate, just like today, when we co communicate, uh, we have storytelling, right? So this speaking sign simply is a storytelling. And then number 10 is data-driven in today's lingo. Like you quantify things, you storytell what is data. So combined together, it's sort of storytelling, but it's quantified, it's, it's a recording. So recording numbers specifically, okay? That's the first step. So I'm not going to talk in detail about what speaking sign is made of. It's, a whole nother thing. Okay, 
swan uh, is made of three parts. So if you look, one, two, three parts, right? And you see it's kind of symmetrical. It's a mirror image. Um, the top, this is our bamboo sign. So most of Chinese characters, when they are when it comes to describing plant, plant is using this convex shape or concave shape, uh, pointing upward. So it's kind of like a trident looking thing, pointing upward because that's sun facing or sun rising up to the sun. Um, that's how plants grow for the majority of the plants. But a bamboo, because it's leaves draping down shape, um, and China, and also because there's this significance in Chinese culture, a lot of um, materials used in making tools in Chinese was made from bamboo. So it's like a, a major material source and it has its own distinctive shape. So when we see this draping, <laughs> I guess it's a con, I don't know, convex or concave um, shape on the staff that we know is bamboo. So on the top, why two? Because bamboo always comes in groups, always comes in clusters. So two is enough to mean it's multitudes. It's not a singular. So that simply gives you, uh, you know, the, the material so source. And then the middle, it, it looks like an eyeball <laughs> because Chinese have this eyeball shape it looks exactly like that. But over here, it was not differentiated. Like it could, it was it was only in this in this case because this uh kind of oval shape looking with two horizontal lines in the middle can be both eyeball and cookware. So sometimes Chinese add something else to differentiate the two. But in this case, it was not differentiated. This is cookware. Uh, the reason why is there are two hands beneath the eyeball and this three finger hand symbol reaching from the bottom of the screen. You look at this as if as a screen, it's like a first person perspective, right? Reaching out, holding the cookware. Has nothing to do with eyeball there. So simply we differentiate um, this icon by context. And um, in other characters, when it's coupled with other icons, it make more sense to interpret this icon, same looking icon as eyeball in other contexts. So this is contextual differentiation. And then the two hands reaching for the cookware means somebody in charge of cooking. And bamboo means uh, the material Chinese use to make abacus. Abacus is the, you know, the calculator, the ancient way of calculating quickly um, because it, abacus have the, it's systematic way to record numbers, digits, and there are certain moves. You can just use three fingers <laughs> to quickly move the beads on the abacus um, to you know, go to the next digit or um, to plus minus easily. Um, so it's Chinese way of uh, computing and uh, running arithmetic on it. And um, so why cookware plus bamboo sign becomes abacus, becomes um, becomes calculating because ancient times cooking, uh, there was no refrigerator. So cooking, you have to carefully calculate how many people, how many mouths you need to feed and uh, how much food or ingredients you need to put into that cookware. So when it comes out, people just have enough, no leftover there because there was no preservation method to keep your leftovers. Okay, so cooking become a major endeavor that worthy good calculation, um, right? It, especially like in ancient times, we by now we almost take food security for granted, like it's a given. But in ancient times, it's definitely not the situation. So calculating of food was a major application used for calculating. So when people put all these symbols together, people, uh, the users of the language can easily relate to the scenario and realize that's needed for calculating. So record, calculate two major steps or functions of computer. So that's the compute. And now the ter, in English we have this ter uh, to mean something, something, right? 
is a noun, means something who has the function to do the previous action. So action plus er means the doer of that thing, that the action. Uh, so Chinese made it obvious because er can be both depends on the, the context, right? If it's a writer, reader, you know, it's a human activity. Eventually machines can do that too, right? But at least back then, um, this ER sometimes like a computer in this situation is a machine. We know this ER means the thing that can compute. Instead of like a writer, it means the person that writes, right? So this ER in English doesn't differentiate is a thing or machine or human. But in Chinese, when we translate, we made it obvious. It's ji is man-made machine. Okay, man-made machine, the left is the word symbol, it's a material use. And as you can imagine, ancient times, most of the tools were made by wood. It's simply easier. Metal processing was a whole thing, right? More expensive, more specialized. But the wood, uh, it's more applicable, I mean, applicable and easier um, access material. So wood making the right side, you can see this four circles, almost looks like a trolley system, right? Uh, so trolley system is kind of an amplification, mechanically amplified force. And this was used already in the mechanisms of uh, bow shooting thing. So the, 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 the here, the left side here, this is a side view human figure. Looks almost like a lambda <laughs> in this view, right? Uh, and then the right side, uh, the right side here is um, ancient Chinese weaponry slash farming too. So ancient times farming to weaponry, both got metal parts on it, both good, and the sharp edges can be used against the earth as a toiling or farming tool, right? You work on the nature or work against another human being because they got metal, sharp metal edges on it. Um, so this is a convertible double purpose um, uh, tool. And we know this is a human using this weaponry um, uh, like empowered or amplified uh, with this trolley system and together plus the wood symbol together that means this uh, bow shooting trigger uh, mechanism so I guess in ancient times bow was or archery um, archery was used almost like a long distance like far range long range weaponry right you can you can um, hurt your enemy before you get close in person, con close contact. So there's a far ranging weaponry, ancient times. Um, the far you can go, the worse, the, the more force you can put into that arrow, arrow, the better, right? So this, this amplifier was weaponry design back then to make it more powerful. Um, so this is a very suitable even if it, it came from this wartime, but I guess that was an uh, ancient uh, society survival, um, survival thing like, or application. You have to have advanced weaponry technology uh, to be able to survive as a culture or as a tribe. So this machine came from this weapon making. It's, it's totally understandable. <laughs> okay, so computer together simply means ji suan ji is, I mean, ji suan ji is, a Chinese response or recapturing or re imagination, or um, it's almost like a definition in the uh, in the um, in in itself. It's the man-made machine used to compute, um, and that's computer. So here are just I want to put this two distinctively looking computer in different generations, and to show within a short time, really humans achieve big exponential growth techno technologically and compare with the ancient times, either that this roping technology, or you have to calculate it just for, for food, for, for food preparation, or this, this far-ranging bull or sling throwing mechanism actually 
used to represent the human made tools, probably the most advanced military technology back then, right? Um, like all the way to computer, this tiny, harmless looking thing, but can do powerful things. So this is huge um, progress in history. And I'm excited to be living in there and also excited to share with you how Chinese capture and all that ancient technology embedded in the characters, kind of in, in conversation, in silent conversation that I try to explain here. Um, to in response to today's technology. All right, catch you into the printer thinking that one. Okay. See you next.